So here's going to be a review of the NZG Libre LR1300. You can buy them just about at every model shop. Uh, they go for around $439. So uh, assembly of the model was great. Really easy. Um, just flawless. Perfect. Didn't have any problems with it. Uh, went together fine. All the parts perfectly fit each other. And uh, assembly is fine. So it's got rolling tracks. Tracks roll uh, very smoothly, at least on one side. Um, I believe because the cab is resting on this one, but uh, they're metal and they're detailed. Personally, I don't really like the look of them too much. I wish they were a little wider. Um, I I swore the real ones were a little bit wider. I think you could have a narrow track for this crane. Um, the car body, or the rotating bed, has counterweights placed on them. Uh, the way that they place them, I really don't like too much. Um, a lot of stuff on this model is just placed. Um, not really screwed in or clipped in. You really just place them on the under carriage. Just like the 18,000 or whatever, but these seem to always come out or you see they're loose a little, which I really don't mind because once they're in there they're in. Um, the cab raises. Can't raise it too high though because the cylinder holding it in will uh, come out and as you can tell the plate comes off. Like so that's why the tracks won't roll but we'll just keep it like that. <laughs> uh, the cab tilts in when you take off the, the boom butt or the heel uh, for transport. Well, uh, this crane breaks down for transport. You can take each track off. I mean, it's it's perfect for transport. Uh, breaks down really nice. Um, tell me that problem with the cam. Um, now, this part as well just pops right in there. Just literally. Just place it there. That's it. Alright, so, uh, I took off the bottom of the cab for the review because I'm having a little problem with it. So, to get the rest started. Cab is nicely detailed. Really nicely detailed, actually. Now, the door is open to go to your keys for the drums. This door opens right here. I use the front winch for my main hook block. Usually, I always use the back winch, but on this one, I decided to use the front and then over here this winch is for the A-frame to raise and lower your boom. Uh, I read on reviews and online and I heard also that uh, that winch is usually a pain but on mine it really wasn't a problem. It rolls smoothly perfectly just like the rest of the winches on the crane. Really smooth actually. Um, I mean, it's perfect on this one. Um, so, uh, I don't, maybe they fixed it or, or something, but it's fine on this one. Now, since I was talking about the drums, I'll show you each drum and why I like them so much. Now, you can see the drums right in there have a ton of line really awesome even though the crane really can't have that much boom and jib they give you a lot of line I and mean, that it's just more than you'll ever use uh, like I said I use this one for my main block and this one's my whip line that one's the gantry a ton of line really nice a lot of line you can see the top of the crane also has nice detail it's all uh, etched and has feeling to it paint job is also nice and crisp. The exhaust stack comes off. Uh, when you actually get the crane, you have to install the exhaust stack. Now, one thing I cannot understand is why the self-assembly cylinder doesn't have anything to hold on to. Um, I, I really don't know. Um, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest, it doesn't extend, and it just rests on the body there. 
And also, if you look, it's right in the middle of the A-frame and all the line, which, thank God, they put the anti-jump the rod there, which is another good thing, which I love, why I love this model so much. Even on, on the head of the jib, it has the, uh, sorry about that, the anti-jump rod there. I did that on my 18,000s hook block, the line will not jump. I wish they did it on the bottom of it, though. Um, they did it on the top, which is, really, it's good enough. Um, and the A-frame is also nicely detailed. Now, onto the counterweights, and also, I will be going on to the back of the crane next. The counterweights, they do weigh a decent amount. Um, um, hold on one second. Counterweights, uh, they're not really too heavy, but they do support the crane. Now, is does the crane have a good risk of tipping? Yeah. Now, it, it's only tipping, not because of it doesn't have enough weight, but more of the fact that the jib and boom are metal, and it's a heavy metal. Um, so, I mean, really, the weights, they, they are, they're light, but they're heavy. I mean, it's die cast, and they are held in by this pin right here. Uh, they will stay in without it, but just put it in there and, you know, just put it in there. <laughs> now, turning to the back of the model. Now, the back of it, which exposes the huge counterweights, and from being behind the back of the real one, when it was working and parked, it is very large. Uh, for only a 300 ton crane, huge. Cannot even imagine a bigger one. Um, you have one pin back here one very large pin that holds in your whole counterweight tray and then you also have uh, like on a normal Weber crane the self lift uh, to lift up your counterweight tray you can see all the line for the A-frame and the, the self assembly cylinder which hangs in there really I'm not a fan of that thing uh, I may actually take it out if I could figure out how to because it just is really annoying there um, now show you the right side it's kind of hard because I have the jib down low so that's why I keep stopping and beginning the video the right side of the crane is really pretty much the same as the other side not really too much detail uh, one door opens on this side that 